Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you so much for coming. I've held on to these photos for 37 years and, you know, got busy with my family and work and stuff. And then I tried to uh, contact members of the Uyghur community and wasn't having luck, but um, a friend of mine uh, introduced me to the Muslim Community Center here, and I'm so pleased that uh, you responded in a positive way. And thank you to Kasim uh, in particular and Munir um, for helping to organize this and dealing with the technicalities, etc. I really appreciate it, and I hope this is uh, the first of many opportunities to show people the wonderful life I experienced in 1984. So, too close. So, um, what Kasim and I discovered when we opened up the slides is when I sent them to him, they got scrambled. <laughs> so they're not in order. Um, the I have photos from when I took a bus from, I think, Longshow to Tudafan, and I spent about 10 days maybe in Tudafan, and then I went on to Kashgar. So those are the two towns in the photos. So I'll just uh, quickly describe each photo and tell you where it's from. If you recognize anyone or if you recognize yourself, note it down, and I can send you family photos <laughs> of relatives. If you know, if you see a little a little boy and that was you, I'd love to send you a, a photo of that. So keep your eyes open. So here, the first photo is um, after shortly after I arrived in Tudafan, and this is the little market. And um, what I what's interesting is the Han policeman on the side, and that was my introduction to the fact that. On the surface, things seemed fine, and the people were very friendly and nice, but they were always being watched. <laughs> I thought this was a classic photo of the policeman looking out. And here's in the market. I loved the little boys and little girls' haircuts. Mm -hmm. I thought they were great. I, I think they should be brought back as a style. I have 147 photos to get through, so I don't want to bore you, so I'll, you know, keep moving. Here's some of the photos, like this one, don't have a huge amount of con content, but Kasim said, keep the photos in. You might recognize your father, your grandfather. So, you know, some of the photos are a little boring, but, you know, not if some, they're somebody's grandfather. <laughs> And here's the marketplace in Tudafan, again. Go ahead. Ah, oh, kebab. I had spent uh, maybe six weeks in China, and I was exhausted in Han China. The food was terrible. <laughs> it was all coconut oil and and rice, and canned vegetables, and canned fruit, and um, just very difficult. I, you know, I, when I got to Beijing, there were good restaurants, but otherwise the food was awful, and I was so happy to get to a country with Middle Eastern food, and uh, just delicious kebabs, and salsa, and all that, so... And here's another salesman at the market. In all, these are all Tudafan. And here's the, I love this little girl's haircut. And Kasim says this is bamboo, which I didn't realize. Sugar, sugar no, sorry, sugar cane. You told me bamboo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm not saying that. Uh, and this man was a traveling entertainer, and he went on and on and on. <laughs> so 
so I sat and waited to see what's in the bag. You know, he kept hitting the bag and talking and talking, but he talked for so long I finally gave up. So sorry, I don't have a photo of what's in the bag. It was like <laughs> he went on and on. Popsicles. Next. Shoe repair. Next. Oh. Here's my favorite, the bread. I loved the bread. There was no bread, only rice in Han China, and this bread was so good. Do you, you all remember the bread, right? Remember the taste as well. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Many bread stalls in here. <laughs> Kasim said keep the photo in, so I kept the photo in. <laughs> Taking a nap. Next. And I love the little cradles. Uh, these are women out in front of their home. Next. Working inside the doorway. No. I just liked this woman and her baby. They were so sweet and so friendly. Now these these guys. Yeah, these guys I, I call them I call them the dudes. These are the dudes in Totafan. But I, I found uh, we were more fashion conscious, and, and I liked how they dressed, so I thought these guys were very cool. <laughs> Recognize anybody? Is one of you? Yes, you like me. <laughs> yeah? The one on the right, it looks like me. Really? <laughs> hey, if you're sure. Yeah, but I do. I have the same cap, same style. Uh, yeah? Yeah. You were a cool dude. <laughs> okay. And here's a mom and her baby. Go ahead. And Kasim told me about the irrigation system in Totofan, which I'm sure you know about. It's really impressive what they did. So. Here's another mother and baby, Madonna and child. And the children were so, they were so happy and just ran around pretty free all through the town. This is still Totofan. Um, this guy is on the way to his market. To the market, I told Kasim he's the he's the really handsome Uyghur guy that I saw. <laughs> and so here's the market in Turfan, which was of course much smaller than Kashgar. Yeah, yeah, animal market, right? Um, while we're switching to, uh, in the evening, there was a performance in our little hotel. And, uh, the, the man? Or, yeah, that's, Kasim said he recognized, I mean, he's quite famous. I was impressed that they performed with us, and it was wonderful to see. Really great. They were so full of character and great musicians, too. Go ahead. This guy was so good. He's one of the best drummers I've ever seen. Do you, does anybody recognize him? Not from side. <laughs> Not from the side. This is all in Turfan. He was. Really good. 
And he was working hard too. You can see, you know, the sweat <laughs> on his forehead. So here's the market again, and you see, you know, once again, I assume this is a Han Chinese man looking around, keeping his eye out. And then the next day, there were dancers in the little area pavilion of my hotel, and they were wonderful too. Really, such a nice dance style. And this, oh, what is what are those instruments called? Chom? Chom. He was really good too. Those were the. T he was another really great musician, and I wonder what's happened to him. You know, he was so good. So um, I took a taxi, which I think I, I never saw any cars in Kashgar or, or you know in East Turkestan. So looking at modern photographs of Kashgar and Turfan, I'm just shocked by the highways and the cars. There were no cars <laughs> except this one taxi that took me out to the Bezeklik Caves. So these are just a photos of the landscape going out to the Bezeklik Caves. Just next. And there they are. It's, it's funny, I don't have any photos inside. Maybe we weren't allowed to take pictures inside. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, but there's a, uh, Wikipedia has some photos of the, of the mosaics inside that were quite beautiful. And uh, so people working in the fields nearby, I'm not sure if it was their land or Chinese land or what it would be. And this is the town of Yarkoto, Yarkoto? or the Chinese name is Jiahe. Joho. Joho. Yeah. Right. Which apparently list lasted from the second century BC to the thirteenth century when it was destroyed by Genghis Khan and the Mongols. That's what Wikipedia says. This is the only photo of me in <laughs> all the pictures, but I was there. <laughs> There I am again. <laughs> oh, I loved this statue. And um, it, it was at a very small museum in Turfan. Is anybody here from Turfan? Do you remember a museum? Oh, okay. Well, Kasim says it's likely to be sort of fun because uh, the decorations on the body are more typical of that region, the Tortafan region, than in Kashgar. But it's kind of an amazing statue, and where is it now? Who knows? Oh, this is supposed to be the last photo in the show. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> and this is the beginning of the show where I, this is the bus I took from, I, as I recall, Long Show. And this is the uh, Tian Shang and the Taklamakan Desert on the way. This is one of the people I met 
at a stop, at a rest stop. So this is on the way to Totofan. And apparently the man is wearing, uh, Kazim says the man is wearing a Kazakh hat, yes. right? So this is where we stopped for the night. And I think this is the road to... Okay. <laughs> right. So, like I said, how long it took you from there to reach Mashla at that time? Uh, from Langshou to Turafan, where I stopped, it was two days. Oh, I don't remember. I think I, I probably. How long it would take at that time? Five days. Usually the boss is at a four night period of five days. Oh, really? See, I've, it's been too long. I forgot. I forgot that trip. <laughs> but we... I didn't have a translator, but people were so friendly, it wasn't really necessary. <laughs> I don't know. We just, you know, did hand signals, and I, I learned a little. We were. And... I think, you know, there must, probably the hotel owners spoke some English, but, it, you know, it was a lot of friendly smiles and waves and pointing. <laughs> so. This is like a 20, 50 miles from where I live. Oh, really? Oh, okay, if you want the photo. Um, so what, we spent the night in this, I thought it was, I got excited and thought it was a caravanserai, but Kasim says it was probably built by the Chinese, but anyway, it was kind of exciting. A little hotel where we spent the night, very primitive. And uh, this is one of the uh, women and children that we met, uh, that I met in the car caravanserai. And another little guy. And this this was a, a woman that I met on the bus. We became friends. And I, she wrote down her address. I can't remember if I sent her a photo or not. Um, I've got a photo of her journal, so maybe maybe I can show it to you. And, Send her, I mean, who knows? Send her a photo now, except maybe that's not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and this is the bus driver, the friendly bus driver. So, this is the this is Kashgar. This, and you know, this is actually the first photo of Kashgar, and it's so much busier than Turfan. And this is old Kashgar, so maybe you leave it on here for a little bit. Did they destroy this area? Yeah, this was, you know, I wandered around the streets here. All destroyed, wow. Okay. And... <laughs> This was the only, really, it, it's, it stuck out like a sore thumb, is what I always say, because it was, it was so incongruous. It just did not fit into the cash guard, what I saw of cash guard. Just, you drive down a street and boom, there he was, you know. This is still exact. Yeah, I know. It was... Fortunately, there weren't a lot of this kind of statues. And this, is, this was the only one I saw. And um, this is the alleyways in that neighborhood I took a photo of earlier. Little boys running around. 
having tea and the oases were beautiful in Kashgar it was so green oops sorry I some of the photos the quality is not great so there are some little kids playing in the old you know, along the irrigation canals. Oh, you can swim there? Yeah? <laughs> this photo, I, this is an odd photo, but I took it in the main square. This was the main square, which was where the Eid Ka, Eid Ka Mosque. So there were, you know, instead of cars and big highways, you had people driving their donkey carts. Yeah, this was the Uber driver waiting for to pick someone up. But people just hung out in the square. It was very quiet and relaxed. And um, this was Saturday, the big market day, and a lot of people from uh, small towns came. Into, the, into Kashgar for it, and so this is where I first saw women wearing uh, burqa, right? And so I assume that they were from the countryside and came in through the market. And so here are some of the shops, if it's in order. I, I really loved the shops. I thought they were beautiful. This is a junk shop, I guess. Yeah. And Kasim said that these are the boys are making wedding gift chests. Yeah. Knife sharpener. This guy was very proud of his knives. <laughs> Oh, people were really pretty. It's it seemed pretty happy there. Yeah, saddles, beautiful saddles. Hardware store. Yeah. And then. You know, I, in Han, China, I'd seen the, the uh, young pioneers, so I guess you guys had to wear those scarves. Did you get indoctrinated? Yeah, yeah. 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 If we go to school, if we go without the steel scar, we were the bad guys. We stand out as a bad. Oh, the juvenile delinquents yeah. or something. Yeah, really? Yeah. At least they got to play musical instruments. So. Oh, and this was my favorite noodle shop. Ah, I loved this food. I mean, I think also the, the chef was very handsome, so I like to go back and get food with him. But it was very clean and the food was delicious. Yeah. And this is a cafe I, where I mentioned I, I I came to the cafe and I kind of got the feeling I was interrupting a conversation that might have been, you know, sort of politically inclined because everybody became quiet yeah. when I came in. So I think people were talking already about the situation. And this is the Eid, Eid Ka? Yeah. Oh, this is my favorite shop. God. A, yeah, apothecary or medicine, and you can see the lizards. And I think that's rats in the back or mice. And a bat. And the skeletons of other things, too. 
I think the colors in his shop are so beautiful. So this is, yeah, calling for prayers. I think this is Afak Koja. Is that right? I hope it's okay that I took the photo. I, you know. Oh. And now we're back to eat ka again. <laughs> Preparing to pray. I bet you didn't see anyone wearing jeans, right? No jeans. Nothing. Some old friends chatting in front of the mosque. Okay. Oh, yeah? Do you recognize anybody? Any grandfathers? <laughs> <laughs> you you know them? Really? Well, after prayer, she's just sitting on the chat. Yeah. And now we're back to the um, Afak Poja. <laughs> The cemetery and and, and that this is Afakoja, I mean, the actual temple, right? And these are the tiles that Kasim told me about. I didn't realize that Kashgar was famous for its tiles. These must be very old. Oh. And then back in town, I came across uh, some musicians that were selling instruments, and this is where I got my uh, guitar. One, one of those, or maybe a smaller one, apparently. I don't know. But anyway, this is the guy I bought them from. <laughs> And this guy played Rala beautifully, and I got I got this Rala at this little uh, place where they were selling instruments, but I, I don't have a photo of it. And here are the kids. <laughs> the little kids were so they were so playful and having fun. And the stroller was great. <laughs> Two little girls. Somebody peeking out from the middle. <laughs> this is a funny photo. I'm sort of embarrassed because they they were looking at me like, who are you? Because this this is the first year that there were tourists, and you know I had this big camera, not very good, but they were looking. I think they were studying the camera, but they were looking at me and going, <laughs> but it's. <laughs> it, it was not that great a camera, and actually I had fallen into a canal in China and my camera got wet and um, I took it to, I, I hung it out to dry with a fan in my hotel room that night. And it, I, I took it apart and the Chinese put it back together so I'm kind of amazed that these photos are, <laughs> look okay. It's a film, right? It's a Film camera, right? Yeah, film camera. Yeah, these are from slides. I have slides. And here's some other characters. 
And here are the little kids. I like the guy fluting. <laughs> and the, you know, the little guy in front is so tiny and frail. You know, I hope he's strong enough to grow up nice and strong. But he was, that look on his face. And here, Kasim said he did that when he was a little boy. <laughs> so did you all do that? Yes. You did? Oh, shame on you. <laughs> Your mother, probably. <laughs> <laughs> A beautiful little cradle. And so this is, uh, you know, on Saturday morning, we saw lots of donkey carts coming into town, and it was for the Saturday market. Actually, that is a self-driving car. <laughs> ah! Oh, good! Especially on the way back home. Oh! Especially on the way back home, right. And this is the parking lot, I guess. That's what I called it, the parking lot for the, for the market. So it was very crowded, as you will see. Just amazing that people got things done. This was all around the market area. There were people selling things, barbers, and then one, two, three. Next photo. Down they go. <laughs> they all went down at the same time to shave. So this was the animal market, and these are pictures of people um, bargaining with each other. Lots of beautiful horses. And, and uh, we saw, got to see one guy riding his horse around to test it out and see if it was healthy. Lunchtime. <laughs> Checking the teeth. <laughs> this was. You can see. You can. You can uh, see the age of that. The age. Oh, the age. Yeah. 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 the teeth. They know how old the uh, Aha. Uh -huh. And they even were selling pigeons. <laughs> and Kasim told me about the mediator, like the yes. two people would bargain. And so I guess the guy in the middle is listening very carefully and mediating the bargaining. <laughs> the broker, yeah. Very intense. And they came to an agreement. So. <laughs> Oh, I really like this picture. <laughs> I, I think that it reminded me of, uh, you know, I studied art in college. I minored in art history, and it reminded me of actually 17th century Baroque European paintings by the great artists. <laughs> the faces are just so wonderful and so weathered. Then it was lunch time and it was time for samsa, right? 
Yeah, everybody was eating samsa. Myself included. Okay. So this guy offered me some melon. <laughs> Oh, and the, these guys, what are, what's the name of what they're making? Lao Yeah. Oh, One, two, three. Samsa. And here's the samsa. I really liked how they made it. I know how to make it. Oh, you do? Oh, make some. Here's a samsa pro. Oh, yeah. So they were alternating like that. And then after lunch, I came back out, and the area was just packed. I was shocked. There were so many people. And still bargaining very intensely. And then I looked down and there were these little boys who were staring at me the whole time I was taking pictures. Any, any of you in there? <laughs> and then that evening, this is my Rawab. And um, I, we were invited to a wedding, and so these are musicians that were performing. I mean, it was it was it wasn't the wedding itself; it was a celebration. And once again, wonderful dancers. Oh my gosh, they were so it was so nice, and musicians playing. <laughs> And delicious food. We were really grateful to be invited. Yeah, very special. And here are my two friends from the U.S. So you didn't travel alone then? No, no, no. I was always with some people. <laughs> Oh, and I love this photo because I think this woman is beautiful. And I love her hat and her scarf are just so elegant. And I guess those are her grandchildren. But I really like that photo. It would be wonderful if somebody recognized her. But And there's a little girl at the wedding. Now, the, these are sort of random <laughs> photos. Oh, this is the airport. It doesn't look like this anymore. <laughs> and here's the airplane I took to get back to, I don't know, maybe they... Maybe, and then took a flight to Beijing. Is that how you have to stop? Yeah, I didn't spend any time in Urumqi. Too big. And here are all the people who came out to see the airport, see the airplane land. I guess. And this is, you know, your typical donkey cart. And this is a typical donkey cart that went over a ditch. <laughs> oh, the donkey is thirsty. That's what he went for the water. Now, now these these are all out of order, <laughs> but I think this is in Kashgar. Oh, and what, do you remember the name of this little mosque? 
It's it was out near e Apacoja, I think. I thought it was beautiful. And are these what are these? I wasn't sure what they were. Shrines to a particular fam for a family or rich guys. Okay. These two little girls are from Totofan. Oh, and this photo is, <laughs> it was supposed to be right at the beginning of the show, but it just shows, I, I felt like they weren't wealthy, but they did, the women did wonderful things with their clothing and were very stylish. I mean, after being in Han, China, it was still very Maoist influenced. And the women were very plain, wore very simple clothes, and had haircuts, just very boring haircuts, just straight across and straight across. But the Uyghur women, I thought, paid attention to how they looked and looked and, and dressed very well, even though their clothes were very simple. So, and they're high heels, you know, always high heels. Etc. It's really nice. And that's the end. Wow. <laughs> My own personal feeling. Oh, I just, I, you know, I'm so familiar with these photos, having lived with them for a long time, but. Um, you know, like I said, it was a relief getting to East Turkestan, and the people were so kind and friendly, and even though I hardly spoke a word of Uyghur, I, I did fine. It was, people were too kind and friendly, and they were very, it was very culturally rich society, and so I got to see the music and the dance and enjoy the food. It was definitely one of the best experiences I've ever had, and I'll never regret it. And, um, you know, I talked to a couple of people about showing the photos elsewhere. If, if people are interested in other communities, I really want to share the photos. It's the least I can do, given the situation there. So, any questions? Yes. Uh, let me First of all, thank you so much. It, it brought so much poignant memories. Uh, even though I was like probably five years old back then when you were visited. But growing up pretty much, uh, I, we, I grew up pretty much seeing all of what, what's in the picture. I was part of it, what's in the picture. It brought so much of fondness and memories. And it's just hard to, to express with words. Thank you so much for, for the, all the pictures. And, and we were talking even back in 1984, all the pictures you took is really nice quality. It's it's very, very quality picture. And the question is what, back then, what what, what was it that made you go the visit in, in this remote place? Because I figured there were tourists, but back then, maybe not as many. Right. Well, I, you know, I've always been kind of an adventurer, <laughs> or was back then, and I had experienced um, Islamic culture traveling in Pakistan uh, the, uh, a couple of months before, so I had remained in China, I mean in Asia, to go travel further in China. And I really like the Middle Eastern culture. I really think the music is fantastic <laughs> and the food is great. And so I was already, in, and the art is wonderful. So I was already um, really uh, entranced by the culture of the Middle East. And so like I say, I was so tired after two months in Han, China, the opportunity to come back 
to a Muslim culture just really appealed to me. So that's why I went, and I wasn't disappointed. <laughs> the music especially is, I just love it. So. Thank you. Thank you. As, as, as you said, you, since you had the, the personal experience there, um, as, as, as you see, we, uh, culturally, even in, uh, in many aspects, we have been, as, as you visited, we have been rich in culture, uh, in, in, even even in crafts, the way you you, you in, even in contrast between the how people dress between Uyghurs and Chinese, you can imagine how the trajectory if, if the way that things as it is like we had the we had the we had the freedom to to live the way our own life our own way, but unfortunately with with, with more encroachment of China Chinese culture and Chinese influences and and even their propaganda of portraying us painting us is a very bad picture of and but so I, the one thing I, I wish that more and more people could see what you see or at least from the pictures right uh, that they would understand actually uh, we were not as what China or what they they, they painted us as to be like. Yeah, I, I would like to, you know, if these photos can be useful in that way, I would like to share them broadly. So, Thank you. Um, you know, if you have ideas or thoughts, <laughs> you know, I've already been in contact with, oh, I don't have her name, but um, anyway, I'm, I'm trying to provide a wider audience, and I think, you know, the things like the New York Times has been very good about presenting the situation in East Turkestan and, you know, other groups have done well. So I feel like it's pretty, people are pretty sympathetic. It's, it's the Han Chinese. You know, I have a friend who is Chinese American and she did a tour of Xinjiang a couple of years ago. But she wants to see these photos, and I think it would be good for her <laughs> to see them from photos from a Uyghur perspective and understand a little bit more about what's going on there, because I, I just can't imagine what they did on that tour or what they hid. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, thank you, thank you for all the pictures. It's it's really really great. Uh, uh, my question was in back then in 1984. What uh, do you, are you aware of any policy change that made made the first time travelers like like you yourself at the time? What allowed you like what kind of policy changes are you aware of that that made foreign travelers to be able to go to Xinjiang? All we knew, and you know, it was hard to get information because we were, I think we were in Kunming when we heard, um, was that um, East, you know, Xinjiang, East Tur Turkestan was opening up. And uh, at the same time, Dali, which is another area in what? Yeah. Yeah, in Yunnan, yeah, had just opened up. So it was a policy of Deng Xiaoping to open things up. And uh, I'm not sure what else was going on. Maybe it was part of his uh, campaign to improve the economy after the, um, you know, all the chaos of Mao Zedong and to open it up to tourism. Maybe that's all it was. Maybe it was just saying, well, we can exploit these people for tourism. That might have been all, all that was involved there. Yeah, this is a big change in Korea. Most of them, 
1976. After that, Deng Xiaoping come out and start changing things because China has a 30 some years old closed economy. Everywhere, no car, no one own car at that time. Only yeah. the corporate company, government own everything. Land, uh, trees, mountain, everywhere belongs government. All cars belong government. Every car have a special driver. Only the government leader, uh, official person can uh, have a car, uh -huh. but then he has a driver. In the 1977, they start to change the education system. The first time they accept, uh, start the uh, college exam. So it's a big change happening economically, politically. Uh, they need to give and start to give the freedom to people. This is like this period. Yeah, so there are advantages to being so old. <laughs> I got to go there when it was, you know, a, won a wonderful place and somewhat pretty free. Yeah. Comparatively, although who knows what was going on underneath. <laughs> Any, any other questions? Any question from lady side? Any questions from lady side? Yes. Well, thank you so much for your patience. I'm sorry things were out of order, but I just really loved sharing my pictures with you. And like I say, get in touch with me or with Samir if you want copies of any of these photos. I'm happy to share them. Thank you very much. Thanks. I think I had just lo uh, one last minute question, I think. Um, thank you so much for giving us all this beautiful opportunity, you know, to go through this beautiful memories that, you know, some of us has been through. Some of us has never actually, you know, know the existence of these beautiful um uh, cultures, right? So um, the question is, you know, like it looks like when you were visiting back in 1984, it feels like, you know, you're like you're very close to people. So it doesn't feel like right now, if any foreigners go to visit in those areas, there's always, you know, like government officials watching, you know, this and that, right? So I'm just curious back then, do you feel anything that, you know, like um, if there's anyone, like nowadays, right, so if you go visit, there's all these people watching. Do you feel the same at that time or no? But it looks like from the picture, it was not like that back then. No. Is that right? Yeah. I never felt anybody watching me or interfering at all. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I saw them, like the man on the motorcycle in the market. But I was never approached by a Han person. I, I met some Han people on the bus coming out, including one Han woman who was very nice and was not happy about being sent off to East Turkestan. You know, she wanted to be back wherever her home was. But... Uh, and there were very, there were a few Han people, but really not many. Just hardly. I don't know. I just didn't didn't see many at all. So, thank goodness I didn't have to deal with that. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks again. You know, for for wonderful presentation. Let's give a big round of applause to Miss Jenny. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, and uh, I know this is a uh, this is like a uh, we had it just our eight, just like a Tuesday, you know. So it's a great gift for us, you know, uh, for okay. all of us. Eight Mubarak to everyone, uh, and also you, know, you brought up a very nice, uh, uh, you know, instrument. Oh, yeah. So right. uh, we're gonna invite uh, Torunjan to perform a couple of sounds, you know, from the top. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we can enjoy the performance. Uh, three, three times are welcome. Michelle, yeah. No, you can still sit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Turn off the mic, maybe. Uh, oh, you keep the amount of mic. Oh. Thank you. 
yeah, warm up song. <laughs> yeah, I prepared two songs. The yeah, first one is just a warm up song. Then is a, uh, I found a very perfect song for today's event. Uh, yeah, you'll know. You all know. You all, you all heard that song. Man, good car, be a land on which God are without a demand. Man, good car, be a land on which God are without a demand. We can wish God in the land that in the most dark way, man, that in the most dark way, man. Small street, Tarkocha. It's uh, perfect for today's event because we already showed, uh, see, saw that the uh, picture of the Kashgar, Small Streets. That's uh, a very famous song in Uyghur. Oh, 
Thank you very much, Turunjan, for beautiful performance, you know. And this song, does everyone know about this song? Uh, it's called Narrow Alley. It means, you know, uh, the road for we were getting narrow and narrow, you know, being kind of being stuck, you know. Uh, there is losing your freedom, so it has deep meaning. So, yeah, it was a beautiful performance. Thank you very much. And uh, so next one is just that uh, we're going to have a, a little, like a gifting instrument session. Uh, you know, uh, so I know Miss Jenny, uh, Miss uh, Miss Jenny is, uh, you know, very generous enough to, you know, not only bring the guitar and also gifting uh, this guitar. That's uh, that's amazing, you know. So especially if you had a lot of memory, a lot of story, what we see from the pictures, right? So uh, thank you. And uh, just before uh, before this uh, before this session starts, so I want to introduce, you know, this, your foundation a little bit because for some of you, if you never know about this on foundation. So this foundation started in 2019 when uh, it was a mission of, you know, preserving our, you know, uh, helping uh, provide support, uh, humanitarian support for Uyghurs around the world and uh, preserving our identity, beautiful culture, especially in these days, right? You know, and our language not being allowed to spoke uh, spoken and we are not available to, you know, follow our uh, own practices, religious, why culture wise. And uh, that's why we know we have a lot, uh, lot thing to do, you know, just help to preserve this cult culture and our identity. So since start, we've been we we helped around uh, six to seven hundred uh, orphans and uh, you know families in need around the world, you know, the, you know mostly in Turkey and uh, here in the uh, U.S. You know, so uh, please continue uh, support us, provide your feedback, and help us get better. Uh, for the gift session, so uh, I think uh, yeah, we can get started. You know, so I, I know uh, it's 
Turgan Can will be receiving this anything uh, because you are since uh, he's performing this. Oh, okay. Turgan Can, all the children. Yes. He's a friend I talked to you about. Oh, yeah, right. No, I heard about you and your playing was beautiful, and yes. I didn't realize that the uh, guitar was so small in comparison to my own stuff, <laughs> but maybe for a children or something. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Size, right? Job is, uh, size, right? Yeah. It needs a little repair. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's yeah, good. enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Again, just uh, at the end, just uh, give a big round of applause to uh, Miss Jenny and the Toronto and everyone, you know. Uh, so, made this, uh, made this presentation very uh, memorable. And uh, at the end, I know we are now we're in Russian food, so and we still have some food left. Please just. Uh, for the rest of uh, you know, hours, please enjoy the food and uh, uh, do our eight uh, kind of uh, gathering, you know, at the back, you know. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry, it's white. <laughs> so seeing like, uh, first of all, thank you. And second of all, when you visit my land, uh, my hometown, it seems like I was not even born. Oh, uh, I was born in 85. I, I missed you. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, <laughs> so like seeing our people, our culture back then, and uh, seeing what happened for the past thirty-seven years, and I've been living in the United States since two thousand nine. If you remember what happened two thousand nine, July fifth in Urumqi, uh, you might have heard about it. So. I'm uh, seeing a lot of things happening in the United States, kind of like, um, sadly, uh, makes me sad as well. This happened to be my second hometown, and like, what direction is going. And it feels like one day, this may sound kind of like a little bit like pessimistic, but I hope it will not happen. But um, so, seeing so many things in your life, and uh, what do you see the future of the United States? Like, considering what happened to Uyghurs back in East Turkestan and like the development in the United States, what's your thought? Like, uh, since you had a life, like, uh, so you had probably a lot of, not probably, I mean, like, you had a lot of experience, like, life experience. And, like, what's your feeling right now, considering, like, everything, all things considered? Thank you. Um, do you mean. Like in general, like everything, seeing like what happened, like gradually to us, and like what's kind of like United States is direct, like the direction of so going right now. The direction of the United States. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's this is I actually I've been doing, you know I was. When I was at university, I was opposed to the war in Vietnam and was active. And I've always been active that way. And uh, I am really worried now. <laughs> so, but I'm also, you know, there's an old saying, I don't know if you know it, um, pessimism of the mind, optimism of the will. So I'm still working very hard. I'm a, I'm volunteering uh, for the um, to co to contact people uh, in states within the United States. Um, urging them to call their senators specifically right now about the For the People Act, which is a bill in the Senate which would make sure everybody has the freedom to vote and has a possibility to vote and the, you know, the elections are fair and, you know, uh, politicians can't decide who's going to be president the people will decide who's going to be president 
And so this bill, the For the People Act, is very important. And, you know, in 2020, I worked very hard to get some good senators and congressmen elected. For me, that's the way I feel I can, I can help. And the U.S. has wonderful potential, but we've just got to work hard for to make it happen. So... Pessimism of the mind, optimism of the will, <laughs> you know, keep keep working, keep positive. I don't know if that's how you all feel <laughs> or how it impacts the situation in East Turkestan. That's the other thing. You know, one thing I just want to add it is I think we are very optimistic because, you know, you, the, we are coming from the area that has an extreme condition, you know. It's yeah. like dry and all that. You know, although North Park is beautiful, we want people have to be optimism to live in such an environment, you know. Yeah. So that kept us alive till today, you know. I think that's going to keep us through this whole, uh, you know, the things, you know. So, uh, yeah, I think I, I like what you, that's the saying, you know, yeah. Pessimistic of the, of the mind, but optimistic of the you know, beautiful. You know, I think summer is very beautiful. Thank you very much. You know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think also looking at what's happening to the Tibetans and the Hong Kongese, uh, you have allies there. Yeah. And I hope things can get better for all three of those groups. Yes. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Wonderful seeing all of you. <laughs> thank you. Thank <laughs> you.